from NBC4. This is News Conference with Conan Nolan. On News Conference, this week the chairman of the California High Speed Rail Commission and the executive director quit their posts. This following a review of the project by an independent body advising the state legislature not to issue bonds for the $100 billion rail line. Is the bullet train dead? Or is this simply an effort by Governor Jerry Brown to put his own people in charge? We talk with outgoing commission chairman Tom Unberg. And the bloodshed across our southern border as chronicled by documentarian Charles Min. A look at the price paid in the war on the cartels in Mexico. Good morning and welcome to News Conference coming to you from the NBC4 newsroom, our studio downstairs still under construction. In one day this past week, the two individuals most responsible for building a bullet train in California quit their posts. Orange County's Tom Umberg says he no longer wants to be chairman of the California High Speed Rail Commission. And Roland Van Ark, the CEO of the High Speed Rail Authority, says he wants to spend more time with his family. We talked with Mr. Umberg at his office in Costa Mesa earlier and asked him why the abrupt resignations. Uh, this is a transitional time for the high-speed rail project. One of the things that's happening is that we're moving, the high-speed rail authority is moving to the newly created Department of Transportation. Uh, we're about to complete our uh, business plan, which is a seminal moment for the project, and we have to be in construction by the end of this year. All those things really require a full-time chair, and this position is basically a volunteer position. And I thought it best that it have full-time leadership. I can't provide that full-time leadership. Uh, I have a full-time law practice and family and so forth. And so uh, in consultation with the governor's office, we thought it would be best for uh, a fellow named Dan Richard to step in as the full-time chair. So I think for the good of the project, especially at this critical time, that while I'm going to stay on the board, it requires uh, different leadership at the top. I can't speak for the others, but I do think that, that because we've finished or we will soon be finished with the business plan and because of other life changes that others have found it appropriate that to, uh, to, to transition at this point in time. But I think that on the whole, the project is headed in the right direction. Uh, there are many good things. First, the governor has fully embraced the project and his leadership is really, really a critical element. Uh, secondly, uh, the project will begin construction. We have $6 billion to begin construction here later on this year. And third, uh, the federal government has made it one of its top priorities as well. So there are good things happening, and I do think we're heading in the right direction. Let's talk about some of the challenges. You just had a peer review commission take a look at this uh, this past week uh, that said it is not financially feasible, did not recommend that the California legislature go ahead and issue the bonds. Uh, for the first segment to be built in the San Joaquin Valley. Uh, it was a scathing report. What's your response to that? Well, a, a couple of things. I actually think that, that they didn't look at the project as a whole, and they didn't consider that we have very few choices in terms of where we begin the project. The Central Valley is the right place to begin the project because you need a long stretch of track, one, to test trains, and two, we can build more miles in the Central Valley. Mind, be mindful of the fact that the voters voted for a system to connect northern and southern California in order to build out that complete system. The best place to start, we get more miles per dollar in the Central Valley. In terms of funding, we actually have $6 billion of funding. We won't require any additional funding, either from state or federal government, uh, until the year 2016 or so. Uh, and in order to have an operational segment, that's where people can actually ride on the, on the system, uh, we need $30 billion. We have $12 billion, uh, or at least the, the capacity to generate $12 billion. So it's not quite as large a uh, figure as, as they calculated. Uh, and I think we'll make it. I think by the year 2021, we'll, we'll have the $1.7 billion beyond the year 2016 to, to build out the, the first operational portion of the project. Uh, we welcome criticism. And in fact, we've modified our plan because of concerns about what we're going to do to make it uh, beneficial to Californians before we get the whole system built out. And so we're going to improve transportation both in the LA Basin and the peninsula 
uh, while we're building out the middle part of the system. You welcome criticism, uh, but you say that their criticism is unfounded because they didn't accurately look at the rationale behind the Central Valley I think what they, segment. What, well, several things. One is that if you're, if you're looking at the project as a pot of money for transportation purposes, and you want to spend that money as quickly as possible in order to improve transportation in different parts of California, you look at it differently and you say we should allocate it different places than if you're looking at building an entire high-speed rail system to connect northern and southern California. And I think they looked at it as a pot of money to be divided to improve transportation in certain places in the state. Number two is I think that they also uh, didn't recognize that, for example, uh, the president has proposed that there be uh, a, a source of funding for projects like high-speed rail. Number three, I think they also didn't consider the fact that, that there's a $36 billion fund that's available to loan projects exactly like high-speed rail, federal, federal program, to loan the money at extremely low interest rates. Uh, number four is that they suggest that we delay. Uh, every year we delay the project is a $2 billion price tag, has, has a $2 billion price tag. So with interest rates as low as they are today, construction costs as low as they are today, now and in unemployment as high as it is today, uh, now is the, is the best time to begin the project. You still have a bill in the California legislature uh, that would essentially derail the project that the Republican uh, leadership is, is proposing. Uh, in the House of Representatives, uh, Kevin McCarthy, a congressman from Bakersfield, it started off, I understand, as a backer of this back when it was on the ballot. Now he's very much opposed to it. They want to essentially scuttle any kind of federal help. And you have the, the, the treasurer of the state of California, Bill Lockyer, who points out that no bullet train has ever been built that isn't a national project and that federal money is essential to this. Uh, how can you be confident that that federal money will be there? Uh, I, I think... Treasurer Lockyer is correct that this is the largest infrastructure project currently being built in the United States, and so it does require federal money, additional federal money, number one. Uh, number two is that given that this administration has prioritized this project, ultimately we believe that, that there will be federal money there. The other thing is that the population of California is going to be 50 million people by the year 2030. So let's assume we don't build this project. We have to do something. Our infrastructure, our transportation infrastructure is strained almost to the breaking point. So if you add the population of the state of New York to California in the next 20 some years, uh, you're, going to, you're going to see basically a breakdown in transportation systems in California. So if you don't want to build high speed rail, then you've got to do something different. You've got to, for example, build 115 new airport gates, build 2,300 new freeway miles, and add four runways somewhere in the state of California. So if someone says, let's not do this project, let's do something else, that something else costs about $170 billion. So, um, and that's a, that's a legitimate debate, but that's not the debate we're having. The, the question to, of doing high-speed rail versus doing nothing is really not, not a viable alternative if you want California to have the same quality of life and compete internationally 20 years from now. Talking with Tom Umberg, the current but outgoing chairman of the California High Speed Rail Commission. We'll have some more questions when news conference returns. Back with Tom Umberg, chairman of the California High Speed Rail Commission. For at least another month, you'll stay on the board uh, and it turns over to the new leadership. So when last week when you resigned and uh, as did the, um, the chief executive officer, uh, Mr. Van Ark, was that a coincidence that you did it at the same time? Well, uh, we certainly had talked about it. It, it. it is a transitional time, and so both of us recognize that this is a transitional time for the project, that it's going to move to the Department of Transportation. But is this a bad time? Because the argument is made that this is a very important period. The last thing you want is a change in leadership. It is a very important period. Uh, in terms of the chairmanship, I think it does require and demand a full-time chair, and for a variety of reasons, I, I can't be that full-time chair. Um, as to the as to the CEO, I think that this is this is a time when the CEO believes that he is, and and I believe also that that he's completed 
um, the business plan, the funding plan, that we're now on to a new phase of the project and that uh, given that it's going to be within the Department of Transportation, that it's better to, to transition now than even six months from now. Some have suggested Mr. Van Ark was an engineer. He was, very, he was world renowned for his ability to put these projects together, but it was all politics. He was being called up to legislature something like 15 different times for legislative hearings. And it was this problem, that problem, this problem, that problem. He, wasn't a, he just was out of his um, a comfort zone when it dealt with dealing with the lawmakers. Uh, it is true. He is a very talented engineer and he's a very talented manager. Uh, there were, as you suggest, 15 different hearings in the legislature. And I, I think that um, the project, because of its magnitude, there are lots of aspects of it that require um, both technical as well as political attention. And so I, I think that um, this, is, this, this was a bit foreign territory for him. But that's not to say that, that he did not bring the project a long, long way. Uh, I think that having a full-time chair will help in those respects. I think having someone full-time in Sacramento, my successor, for example, will, will help enormously in dealing with, with policymakers. There are a number of different elements that need to be coordinated to make this project successful. Ultimately, political will is the key component. Having the support of the state government, having the support of the federal government, they're both and local governments and, and the local population are are critical elements in, in this whole equation. So I think adding a full time chair who's familiar with Sacramento and familiar with government operations and having a CEO who um, is technically competent to, to build a system and to manage a, a a group of people and lead a group of people who are building the system, I think those are really essential elements. One hundred billion dollars now, the price tag for this. The polls seem to indicate that voters have some buyer's remorse on this measure, that if it were on the ballot again, it would lose. Respond to that. Well, uh, we, we can argue all day about whether the questions are accurate on polls, but, but here's what I believe, is that uh, when the price tag recently was announced on the project, that's a price tag in 2033 dollars. So you know, we calculate a $16 billion contingency and a 3% inflation rate, which are both very, very conservative. Um, I think that Californians do need to see that the project is underway, that they're actually getting something for what they uh, voted for in, in 2008. And I think that once they see the project underway, and, and I know, just like the rest of the world, once there's an operational segment, in other words, once there are people riding on this system, even if it's a portion of the system, that Californians will embrace it like the rest of the world, just like we did air travel. Outgoing high-speed rail chair Tom Umberg. Up next, the drug war in Mexico.